Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special video for you right now because not only are we going to show you two mid-sized trucks that are brand new and cost the same, we're also starting something very special at TFL Truck. That is correct because we have a special event coming up, don't we, Andre? Yes, it's called TFL Truck Trials, where we're going to compare head-to-head -head every mid-sized truck that's currently on the market. Can you believe it? Well, there's a bunch of new mid-sized trucks on the market, plus a lot of the other ones have been updated and offer new features. So we figured, let's get them all together. <sighs> we'll see what happens. And we have two of the newest ones here. We have a 2024 Nissan Frontier hard body edition. Yes. Yes. And we also have the all new 2024 Ford Ranger FX4. So how about this? How about we show and drive the Frontier first and then show and drive the Ranger? Before we do, there's something very important the audience needs to know, Andre. What? These vehicles, MSRP, identical yes. to the dollar. And we're not saying like about the same. No. To the cent, identical. And we'll tell you the price very, very soon. But as you see these features, just think about same price. That's correct. What do you think about the new uh, hard body edition? Uh, well, I mean, I, I was a teenager in the 80s. I went to high school then. So there were a whole bunch of Nissan products running around where I lived, the San Fernando Valley, with these wheels. There were pickup trucks that had them, and there were, of course, SUVs that had them, the Pathfinder. And that was a super cool two-door off-road truck. And at the time, it was really unique. So these wheels immediately remind me of that. Yeah, I love it, dude. I just want to not tell Ford and Nissan and just grab both the Nissan wheel and the Ford wheel, I also like the Ford wheel. Yeah. And just, uh, just hide them away and just put them <laughs> in my garage. Yeah, it is a question of aesthetics and I'm gonna tell you right now that both trucks look fantastic. Uh, some of us have our personal favorites, but all in all, these vehicles are sporting some unique design. I cannot wait to take you around and show you what we got. All right, well, let's pop the hood because you know it's about capability and power. So let's show what the Nissan has to offer and then take it for a drive. Uh, by the way, I love this red color too, and the graphics package and the blacked out front end. That's, those are some of the elements of the hard body edition, which is not cheap, by the way. <laughs> no, it's you know. not. Also, these fender flares here, this is all part of that package as well. And tires and wheels. Um, but this comes standard. This and is the only engine available. Yeah, it's a 3.8 liter V6 that Nissan has had, what, for at least, what, almost five years yeah, now? Yeah, we're working on about five years now. Yeah, um, it's 310 horsepower, which is, it ties it with some others on horsepower. Yep. Very good horsepower. The torque is a bit lower because there are no turbos involved here. Yeah. 281 pound-feet of torque. Now, it is hooked up to a nine-speed automatic transmission. And it has a good old-fashioned proper transfer case, so it is a 4x4, but it's a simple one, so there's no four-wheel drive auto. But this is relatively efficient in this setup, right? Yeah, and also quite powerful. I mean, it's got high-end power because you have to just rev that engine a little bit more right. to get that horsepower. But when you do, the horsepower punches, and then we'll test it in a second. Also, notice struts the hood opens by itself i don't have to play with any of the prop sticks here yeah, there's two of them too ah, yeah that's luxury um one of the things that's really important that you guys need to know about this powertrain is it's kind of the last of a dying breed honestly there's only three mid-sized pickup trucks that are available with a v6 engine yeah the honda ridgeline yep. and the jeep gladiator are the other two correct them undo let's talk about look about yeah. payload and towing ah door time so Let's see, this is an SV. Yep. So this is kind of a mid-grade Frontier with, this, with these packages. The payload is listed at 1,000 pounds, 1,090 pounds. So almost 1,100 pounds of payload, which is not class leading. No, that's actually dreadful. It's I'm, not I'm, very good. It's, it's not good. Um, I, perhaps part of that has to do with, with this. this. <laughs> yeah, that thing is probably, it's pretty beefy. This is beefy. This, this comes with strong. the... Um, but, but it's not a rollover cage. No, they consider this a light bar, although it is yeah. really beefy. This is really built to put lights on top of, and then it has an integrated light here This as is well. really awesome. And I think, well, no, this is not a sliding thing. No. Uh, because it's attached in the front. Yeah. But it also mounts into the uh, rail, the side rail, and you have cleats. Yes, and you do have cleats. So the package that, when we're done with this video, you hear about the price. 
covers everything you're seeing here. Now bear in mind that this package, the hard body package, is available on pretty much any Frontier you buy. Am I correct? Pretty much. So you can choose a, like a Pro4X if uh -huh. you wanted the rear locker. You can still get this package. Uh, by the way, nice coming down of the tailgate and you have a power outlet here in the bed as well. That is correct. Which is a uh, 120 volt, 400 watt power. It's usable. Yep. Yeah. Let's get inside. Yeah. And let's go for a drive. That sounds like a plan. Let's get in this way on the same side. Yay, back seat. Yay, there we go. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Nathan. Yeah, that's right. Put the back in the back seat, it's always funny. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I did it for a reason. Yeah. It's because we want to show, <laughs> we want to show rear leg room. Actually, you know what? Are you, when, are you back comfortable? I am about comfortable and I have power you, adjustments. You could come back another inch and I'd be all right. Okay, how's this? By the way, cloth seats. Yeah, they're cloth seats, but... And very comfortable. I find these seats to be very comfortable. I also like the uh, dash design on this, it's simple. I like the raised white stitching. I think it's great, especially on the, oh my goodness, handles down there by the gear lever on both sides. Yes. Um, all together, I think the overall layout is nice. The screen is too small, too old. Uh, it's okay. I uh, mean, but but okay. compare it to the competition. Yeah, that's true. I mean, other than maybe your truck. My truck has a slightly larger screen even. Oh, yeah? Um, I have a start button. So push start. Um, and of course, remote start, remote door unlock, unlock. I also have heated seats up here. And I have heated steering wheel. Do you have any heated seats in the back or anything mm -hmm. like that here? I see. No, no but what, what I do vents? have, uh, no vents, which is kind of a bummer. I do have a USB and a USB-C, and I have an AC120 volt, which is 400 uh, watt. That's okay. right here. Okay. Um, and what about the rear glass? Um, is it openable? Can you open it's that? It's manual. I, yep. There it okay. goes. So, and it does not seem like it has defrost. No, which is strange because you would think, you know, this is a pretty high price. Okay, hold on one oh, second. Oh, it says, it says my video. Uh, the videographer, uh, videographer is, 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 is messing unbuckled. around. Won't put the buckle and the thing with the people. See, it's a very smart truck. <laughs> well, there are a couple things that I do like. First of all, I actually have pretty decent headroom. I have a really tall torso. If you look at Andre, I actually sit higher than he does, and our butts aren't that much different mm -hmm. in terms of height. Just, <laughs> I got stubby legs. Okay. Um, but I actually have enough room. If Roman was here wearing his toupee, his hair would probably scrape just a little tiny bit. You know how much it costs to be a man with a hard body? What? Three thousand eight hundred ninety dollars. <laughs> is, that, is that for the wheels and the fender that's, flares? That's this whole hard body package. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I do go to the gym like almost never. <laughs> but <laughs> well, why don't we show the athleticism of this little thing? All right. All right. All right. So this is mile above sea level. Okay. You know, I'm relatively comfortable back here. As long as there's not a third person, I'd be all right. Cool. Well, this is a mile above sea level, so th there could be a little bit of a decrease in performance <coughs> on this V6, right? By you ready? Mm-hmm. Oh, good first punch. It revs to about six grand. And that's about 45 already. And 60. It's pretty smooth. I mean, this is the nine speed, which is similar to the one that was in the Titan. Yeah. Um, but this is the only transmission this vehicle gets. It comes standard with that transmission and this engine. So no manual transmissions None. like the Tacoma is No more four-cylinder offered, nothing like that. Um, but for what it is, it gets up and goes. It sounds okay. Yeah, and I love, I mean, it does have that V6 sound, which is pretty nice. And a lot of popular trucks are now switching to small displacement engines and turbochargers. I got to admit that those turbocharged engines, I mean, other than the blow-off, they kind of sound a little industrial, but yeah. whatever, it's not a big deal. I mean, you don't buy these for the sound as far as I'm concerned, but this is what a lot of people still prefer. You know why, Andre? Why? Because they don't trust turbochargers. Yeah, even though, I mean, we've interviewed a lot of engineers and we've tested a lot of turbocharged engines. As we pull back in, Nathan, what's the, what does the EPA say about fuel efficiency? Combined, 20 miles per gallon 
which is not terrible considering that you have a full-blown 4x4 pickup truck, right? All right, so we talked a lot about the interior features, but my final thing before we look at the Ranger is this. The steering wheel moves up and down. Yes. But it doesn't telescope. This is one of the reasons I did not buy one of these trucks. Really? Yeah, seriously, I was looking at the King Cab version of this, okay. which is the same price basically as my little thing, and I could not quite get comfortable because it wouldn't telescope. It's okay. I'm pretty comfy, though. I mean, it's, it's okay for me, but you, you want the extra adjustment once in a while. Agreed. Well, let's switch gears a little bit and look at the all-new Ranger. What do you think about the new style? It is the exalted one. Oh, I'm sorry. That's XLT. I think that's what it meant. <laughs> um, really cool styling. They really did a great job bringing this vehicle up to date. I didn't think on paper it looked that great. You know what I mean? In person, it looks fantastic. I kind of agree, especially in this kind of a gray, cactus gray color. Uh -huh. I think it does stand out with um, uh, accent colors. This is an FX4, so this is also an off-road package. Um, and there's a skid plate down here. Yeah, Sorry, I like this the is skid plastic. plate. Yeah, but that's plastic and that's kind of a bummer. This is a uh, skid plate down below. Yeah. Down further. The XLT is also a mid-grade for them. Yeah. Kind of like the SV on the Frontier. Um, and they have a fresh face new headlamps, new grill. They also changed the um, chassis of it, of this truck. Yeah. Because it looks about the same as the previous Ranger. Yeah. But it's now two inches wider in the track. It's also two inches longer wheelbase. Really? And they modified the rear frame. Let me show you. Okay. They modified the rear section a bit and they did it so they could put the rear shocks outboard ah they're outboard so, so outboard of the frame and tucked up against the rear tires a lot of automakers like doing this because it's better for stability according to them and, and also clearance yeah you know so the shock is the not way. the shock is not hanging down in the middle of the vehicle as well exactly and then they um the, the engineer told me they made the front frame a little bit wider uh -huh. so it can accept v6 engines there will be, uh, well, let's pop the hood. Yes. There will be a V6 2.7 liter available EcoBoost. And also the Ranger Raptor will be available now, with the three liter. I believe that this powertrain that we're about to look at is essentially the same as the one that we had on the one that we owned. Am I yes. correct? Yes, so we actually owned the 2019 previous gen Ford Ranger. By the way, no struts. I have to use, I have to go old school here and oh, use my prop stick. Oh no, that's, that's, that's a demerit. Um, we had a 2.3 liter straight four turbo EcoBoost, and this is what this is. Same numbers pretty much across Basically, the board? Basically, yes. So there's a 10 speed automatic transmission standard. Yes. This is the base model engine then? Yes. So still 270 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque. So a little bit more torque than the V6. Right. In the Frontier, and, but less power. Right. But uh, look, we've towed with this thing, basically, yeah. right? We've and done almost everything with this engine. Before. And it was a bit of a beast. Yeah. It did a really good job, at least with the power. But now it's moving a slightly heavier, slightly larger vehicle. Ah. So now. Look how much room is now in the engine bay yeah, area. Yeah, huge amount of space. You can clearly see why they did it this way. So they could put in something wider like a V6. But I got to give it the Nissan. You know how they have a nice Nissan cover here? Yeah. And the engine looks proper. This is not covered at all. There's a lot of wires and a lot of... Uh, just pipes and everything else going Honestly, on. Honestly, uh, it doesn't bother me that much, but I get, I, I well, agree. Well, because you're not supposed to open this, right? Yeah, Ideally. That's the whole point is that you never should have to, except to put washer fluid in it. And, but, and we're not talking about the reliability in this video, yeah, no, right? No, 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 no. Uh, We're just talking about features and brand new availability. Let's now let's talk a little payload, right? Yes. Payload, towing. By the way, the Nissan, um, is ready to tow up to about 6,500 pounds. Uh -huh. And we'll talk about this. Um, so this Ford, whoa, dude, 1,524 pounds. So just over 1,500 pounds of payload here. That is a lot more yeah. than the Nissan. Interesting. Maybe it has to do with the suspension design. I would have thought that this thing, which is built for off-roading, yeah. Would have had which is a an lower FX4, one. yeah, exactly. FX4, yeah, interesting. Um, so that is interesting. So, Ford, what one of the things they did, they increased their gross vehicle weight rating a little bit, uh -huh. so there's a little bit more space, so they can offer a couple hundred pounds more of payload. So, that's good. Uh, Are the towing, bed sizes the same? Yeah, they're both five foot. Makes sense. Um, this also has an optional, we'll show you bed extender, but seven, 7,500 pounds of towing. 
So about 1,000 more pounds of towing than the Nissan. Okay, that is e either at or nearly best in class. Yeah, well, the only things that are better are the Chevy GMC twins, uh -huh. which is 7,700 pounds, and also the Gladiator, which is 7,700 pounds. Gotcha, okay. But look at this, this is bedline, it comes in the price. Yep. Uh, this is optional, also comes with it. Hey, and there's, look. There's two of these. Yes, can you uh, open them? Yeah, so this is, uh, here's that one. 12 volt. Okay. Okay. And then over here. Aha, uh -huh. 400 watt, 120 volt. Okay, so, so a little bit more. Yeah, Ford offers you two things. Can you use both of these at the same time, do you know? I think so. Huh. You know what it's meant for? Huh. You know, like if you have like a little fridge that's running on 12 volt power, sure. so you, you could still use that there. And then plug in your computer or something like that. Or yeah, so other you... accessories as well. Yeah. So that's, pre but it's only 400 watts. You know, like hybrid Tacomas that are coming well, soon yeah, the, the... will have 2000 watt of power. Sure. So this is still not that. But this isn't a hybrid either. No, it's not. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's get in and go for a drive. All right. All right, dude, so the same orientation. <laughs> Back again. Yes. So let me adjust. Once again, I have power adjustments on my seat. Hmm. Um, so I feel good. And I also have lumbar support here. Are you backing the position that you would normally drive? Yeah, this is a good position. Um, okay. Oh, I have telescoping. Look. Okay. Telescoping is here. That, okay. that, that is huge. But real quickly, I'm going to point out down here. So we do have USB-C and USB. And we do have AC120. That's great. And you have a little place here to maybe put your cell phone, but no air vents back here. Uh, door panels and all that are very similar to the Nissan, but my leg girth, what? my spread, yes. not as good. Um, and also I'm sitting a little bit more upright, but I still have okay headroom. How about knee space? Do you have a little bit of knee space? It's about the same, okay. but as I said, it's it's just a very different type of physical thing. I'm, I'm sitting at a different angle, slightly. All right, by the way, all new interior. I have a 12 inch vertical display here. If this was a more base new Ranger, this would be a 10 inch vertical display. And I have a digital cluster, eight inch screen here because it's an XLT, you can also get a 12 inch. I have a 10-speed automatic, like we said, and I have drive mode, many, many different drive modes. Ah, okay. So but this is pretty nice. I also have um, 360 cameras. Let me show you really quick. Look. So I have 360 cameras. My climate control system is half manual, half digital, which is not the best thing. Mm. I have heated seats, though. Watch yourself on the left. Oh, there's a giant truck. Yippers. Okay. So, how about this? Uh, uh, wow, I'm being blocked. Now he's just backing up real no, quick. No, I think he's a TFL fan. He, of course he is. Everybody is a TFL fan. Hey, you know, this has a lot more kit than the Nissan, I'm going to tell you right now. But the price is the same. Exactly. As we're cruising... Um, we're going to be cruising for a bruising soon. I don't know what it is, but the interior just feels a little bit smaller. Uh, the design is fresh, though. Cloth seats also. Are you ready for the acceleration? Yes, punch it, punt. Yeah. A little bit of delay. There's a delay, all right. Now it comes on. You know what? I the acceleration is quite sprightlier. That was yeah, already... I would say that was much quicker. Yes. I, and you know what it is, though? If this was sea level, it would be a very different thing. For one thing, this would still have a delay, but the Nissan would have more power available because it lasts between five and 7% up here or something like that. Yeah. So I think that it'd be a very close race between the two. And that can do other things. And we'll be doing more testing in TFL truck trials. Oh yeah. Uh, because I could brake torque it. I can put it in four by four mode. This also does not have four wheel drive auto, by the way, because ah, okay. only the Ranger Raptor gets that feature. Um, but, and also there's no push button start. I, I, I had to actually put in the key to start the engine, but I do have a built-in trailer brake controller. Nissan did not have that. So I do have a brake controller for the trailer. You know, that's kind of rare. I think amongst the uh, all the trucks that we're going to be driving, only a couple have that. Yeah, the Chev Chevy does that. And Tacoma does it, but only on certain models. Right. Dude, wow, that this was, thing really has some get up and go. That was 60 already on this side. Yeah, this thing doesn't have a problem moving at all. Um, so I bet you're curious about the EPA numbers. Yeah, what is the um, EPA rating? 
It, it doesn't say. Um, I have it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I was recently on the program, and yeah. it's 22 combined. No kidding. Yes. Okay, but well. The, but, but remember the previous Ranger? Yeah. We never were able to match the EPA ratings in the previous Ranger. Ah. So in the real world, it may be a little bit different. Yeah, and this is a heavier vehicle than the previous one, am I correct? Yeah, it's a little bit heavier. Interesting. Yeah. Now, did they do anything to the plumbing of the engine to make it different? Not much. I mean, there, there may be some tuning differences, right? Uh -huh. Because every year, the emissions regulations change. Yes, of course. So there, there could be small tuning differences, but the power level remains the same, and the efficiency is about the same. Sorry, I have this grandma here. Oh, yeah. Uh, grandma is turning around. This way, please go, please go. Okay. There we go. Is she going doing circles? Yes, yeah, she is. It's a boulder, dude. That's what she <laughs> so, um, interesting. There's a lot of things that have these vehicles competing head to head. Like the overall interior design, really, it's just a question of taste. Yeah. Uh, physically, they the seats are somewhat similar. I would say that the front seats of the Nissan and the backs are a little bit more comfortable. But I think that this is a much more advanced interior. So it's such an interesting cross, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, but I think for the money, which we'll tell you right now, uh, I feel like you're getting a lot more as far as technology, features, and just comfort, and also adaptive cruise control system. Oh, my goodness. Yes. All right. Well, let's hop out and tell everybody what the price is. Andre, before we close, I'm curious, and I know they are, what's the price? <laughs> so the way these are configured with all the options and the destination charges and handling, $46,540, but identical. So they're exactly and, the same price. Yeah, and also pretty high. Yes. That's a pretty high price. Yes. That's about $1,500 more than our Tacoma we recently purchased, the TRD Off-Road Tacoma that TFL purchased. Yeah, and how much was that Colorado? My Colorado, my trail boss that yeah. I own, is 41000 So these two are kind of pricey when you consider the rest. Kind of. They're extremely pricey. Yeah, yes. And it's crazy because the Nissan has a lot more going for it in terms of visual in my book. Yeah. But the Ford's got a lot more going for it in terms of kit, in terms of what's it gets you for the money. Yeah. So if you're nostalgic, I I want to jump into the Nissan, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, Are it's we really both cool. choosing this truck now? For looks, yes. Yeah. But But this is this is what I would drive for the money. I mean, right? I, I would agree. We Because it's got the locker. We don't it, usually agree, but this time I think we agree. I think we agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, remember, in the very near future, we're going to stack these two trucks up against a bunch of other ones, and we're going to see which one is the best in the land. Yeah, TFL truck trials. I want to make one more note about value, because uh, I know a lot of people care a lot about value. As I do. Um, you can get the Nissan as a king cab, short cab, yeah. with a longer bed, two-wheel drive, for under 32000 That's one of the lower-priced ones, Yeah, which is amazing value. This only comes as a crew cab. Ah, so you have to remember that. And this will be over 34000 to start okay. as a two-wheel drive. So if you want a basic, basic model, maybe the Frontier is what you look for. I would agree. Thanks for joining us. Check out, once again, alttfl.com, TFL Truck Trials. We're going to compare five and sometimes six, six. mid-sized trucks at the same time on all of our real-world tests. Or as many as we can stuff in there. Yeah. Thanks.